Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another one of my videos. And this lesson, we'll be working on how to paint a seagull in acrylic. And um, this is my reference photo. It's a royalty-free photo I got from Unsplash. And I'm painting on today on one of these Centurion Universally Primed videos. And um, they're you know, the universally primed are really good because the um, surface can be used for acrylic or oil. If you just buy the oil primed, you can't paint acrylic on it. So I buy the universally primed, and that way um, you can paint with with both mediums. So I've got out my paints and I've got them labeled. You can kind of read what they are um, there. And so I've got the cad yellow light. Yeah, I've got yellow ochre up here, alizarin crimson, sap green, viridian green, orange, trans red oxide and brown oxide, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, and quinac red. And then I have my little Holbein Mr. Spray bottle. And I've got a big bucket of water here. And so that's sort of it, how my setup is. And um, and uh, let's just start from here. So um, I'm going to just paint down sort of a background color. And so I'm going to start with some transparent red oxide. And I'm just going to cover the canvas in a light layer of that. And it kind of leaves the background um, showing through. So. Let me just get a, a little bigger brush for that job. So I'm just going to upgrade myself here and use a larger brush. I want to get through the boring stuff and get on with the painting. So I figured with summer coming, even though I live in the desert. I I think about the beach and seagulls, so I'm going to paint a seagull. So once you get that layer down, you can just leave it like that. And it will, because it's acrylic, it will dry pretty quickly here where I am. But let's say you live in a place where it's a lot more humid. You could um, you could just kind of wipe some of it down with a paper towel just to kind of remove some of the moisture. However, it, it will dry pretty quickly. And I'm just going to be drawing, so I'm not too worried right now about... Um, about like the underpaint mixing with the other colors. So now that I've got that down and that was just some transparent red oxide, I can sort of, you know, do some sketching here. So, you know, to make it fun, you could use just some something neutral like this brown oxide, but sometimes to make it fun, you can use a little bit of CAD red to draw with. And then later you'll have some of that showing through. So I've got some of that on my brush. I'm just trying to draw a little bit of that rock and the little legs. And then I can kind of gauge how much space I've got here. I don't want to cut off the head, so I'm going to put Put where the head's going to fit in right away so I kind of know how I'm going to gauge my my drawing here. And we've got this tail. And we got that. Cool kind of rectangular shaped head almost. Mm 
like that. And we want to be able to fit the the tail feathers in, so I'm kind of making sure I fit that all in. And then you can sort of make your corrections as you go, so kind of comes out a little more there, I'm going to say, and then wraps around there. And then I would say that the feet need to move a little bit this way. So you can, you can kind of lift it off while it's wet like that. And you can leave those for now and later we'll cut out the shape better when we get painting. And I think I want them a little longer just because it gives it sort of more of that seagull personality. So that's why when you're starting off in the painting you wanna you wanna get those in there the right the right length first before you start really blocking in. So, and then this kind of curves up a little more. And then there's some of those feathers like that. And we're going to make the head a little smaller. Just going to cut out the head a little smaller. It's getting a little large. Okay, so um, I think that's kind of a good start. I'm just going to now kind of check everything out a bit more and make sure I'm happy before I start adding more paint. Just kind of fixing that drawing a little bit better here. Because it's such a, a large bird that way, it really takes up the, the canvas pretty quick. This is just an eight by eight I'm working with. And I'm just gonna make this rock a little smaller on this side here. Okay. Okay, so now what, what we can do is start blocking in some of the different colors. And one of the things with a white bird, you kind of, you got to mix up some kind of natural warm, um, warm white. So I'm going to do that with a combo of white, transparent, uh, brown oxide and some viridian and you can add a little touch of yellow ochre because you want it to be warmed up a bit more or add a little if it's too cold or too green you can add a little more of the brown oxide but it'll make a nice warm kind of neutral um, white so I'm going to block that in now and Block in the, the face, and you can even make a little pile of um, a mix that's even a little darker than that. And can add a little bit of that 
red oxide to dull the green as well. And add a little bit of that cobalt blue to the mix. And now you can go in and really get some of that shadow area that you can see around the seagull's neck there. It's more, it's kind of darker. And then as the light comes down and then hits the body again, it gets lighter. But you kind of want to show that. So you've got to make that... Um, that darker gray color for underneath the, the, the beak there. And that was just a combo of white and viridian and transparent brown oxide. And I used a tiny bit of this cobalt blue. And I'm gonna use that down and really get that shadow in the mix down here. And just bring all that color as you go down there because when you look at the reference photo, it's um it's very dark here and in here. So we're just building up to the lighter white. If you don't get the darker in, you won't see the lighter. You can add a little bit more blue in the bottom there just to really add that darker shadow color in there. Just using some blue is kind of nice once in a while. And now we're gonna mix up that grayish color wing. So I think a good color for that would be the cobalt blue and a little touch of black. If it goes, too, just add more blue to it if it starts to get too gray and less blue. I'm just adding a little more cobalt blue to that black mix, and I'm going to put in the wings. And there you go. You've got that nice kind of seagull wing color and it's the darkest kind of shade so what I'm going to do is go back in now with some of that white and just kind of add the lighter color to it so I'm going to add a little bit of that highlight on the top there and you can just kind of put some of those Simple brush strokes in there to show that, and I'm going to just get some more white and a little bit more cobalt, and I'll just put some of that up in there. And then you can, you can bring a few brush strokes to show the wing coming down. And I'm using, um, this is a Utrecht Gold, it's called. And it is uh, a number eight bright. So we're just kind of building these middle tones and sort of um, the darks to till we get to that place where we can start adding some light, you know, feathers. And I'm going to use some of that shadow co white color in there too to show those white feathers there, and then we've got the little black part on the tail. So I'm just going to use a smaller brush. This is like a number two flat, and I'm going to put in some of that black. I want to get that in there. And I'm trying to keep this very simple, a very kind of simple exercise, and keep it with, you know, minimal brush strokes to just to create this fun picture. While you got black going, you could go and put in the seagull's little eye up here. And there you go. 
Seagull is one of the few birds, like most of the birds, the eye lines up right in the middle of the beak, but the seagull, the eye is quite a lot higher than the beak. So I'm just gonna shape that a little. Looking at my reference photo, I'm just gonna shape that a little. And for the beak, the color I could use is some yellow ochre and maybe some transparent red oxide and just sort of get that in there to start. And then you can add the lighter yellow to the beak after you get that in there. And we're going to shape the beak when we start putting in the background. And let's get a little bit of this cad yellow light in there. And just put a little bit of yellow in the tip of the beak there. And for the feet, they're kind of a purpley color looking in that light anyways. They're kind of purpley. Um, but uh, I think what I'll do is just use something. I'll add a little alizarin and a little cobalt blue into that mix I had. And that'll work for the legs, is something darker. And then this one goes down. There's kind of a lot of water there. I don't know how that water got there, but. Okay. All right, now I'm going to go back to my larger brush and I'm going to put in a bit of that water line behind there that's kind of coming. It gets higher up, it kind of comes through here. And I want that to be darker, that kind of gray color that the, there is in the sky. It's like a fog or something. So I'm just going to mix up something for that. So I'm going to mix up some of that cobalt white and transparent brown oxide and you can get this sort of grayish color. I want to get that in there before I start working on the, the rest of the bird so I can have some contrast when I put the white in. So I'm just going to put some of that in there. And this is just sort of a light wash almost. It's got some water in it, but I can go over it later. Sometimes it looks good to have that sort of transparent look on, on the painting mixed with some more opaque layers. I like that. Okay, so now I've got that in, and then there's the lighter layer. I'm just going to put that in by adding a little more white to that mix. Just sort of get that in there. Sort of a different type of ocean, you know, it's more of a gray day ocean. but I think it'll look nice with the bird. But I want to get it in there because when I start adding the highlights to the seagull, then it'll show off the, the, the neck will show off against the dark. The light highlight on the neck will show off against the darker background, which I want. And the lighter stuff will show up against this background here. 
Just add a little more white to that mixture. And just kind of block that in. You can leave some of that background red that we, you know, drew, drew it in with in different parts and that'll look kind of neat after you're done to see some of that stuff coming through. So when you paint with acrylic, you can do these fun things like layering and because your, your paint dries so fast. There's other things that are easier when you use oil, but there's some things that are are handy with acrylic too. And I'm kind of aiming for a more, you know, this is a more whimsical type painting. I'm not aiming for a realistic painting so I, li I like making these brush strokes that are kind of big and loose like this. Now before I get back to the seagull and all the details there I'm going to block in the the stone that he the rock that he's on there so we can use a um, little bit of ultramarine blue and some transparent brown oxide and get that sort of dark color on there first and then we can add the details after. And I might just make it even a little smaller so it's not so Not so big. And again, I'm just having fun with the looser kind of brush strokes, even in the underpainting of it. And you can bring the background back to the edge. But you'll notice I'm leaving little bits of the background color shining through just for fun. And I work on larger, um, more complicated paintings in oil on my Patreon channel. So if you want to paint more birds in, you know, different subject matters, I have just loads and loads of videos on there. Anything from cute Christmas cows to bunnies to a bear even and raccoons. Lots of birds and lots of flowers on there. And that's so you can sign up on Patreon through the link in the YouTube banner or in the description. <laughs> So now that I've got everything kind of blocked in, um, I'm just going to spritz my paint and don't forget to do that once in a while. And then I'll go in with a little bit of that brown oxide and I can just put in a few lighter marks on the rock just to give it some texture. But I'm going to keep this really simple. So I'll just use white um, transparent brown oxide and some ultramarine, just kind of the same mix but more white in it. Just give the rock a little texture.
and then there are some of those little seagull -y marks on there. So you can put a little bit of that on there. Gives it that really, <laughs> it's kind of authentic look there. Okay. And if you get rid of too much of the dark, you can go back in with some of that original wash mix, the ultramarine and the brown oxide, and you can always kind of put in a few details back into the rocks. There. And now we can go back and work on our details of our seagull some more. So I'll switch to a size six brush and I'm going to go back to that white. Get a little bit of that. I'm going to get a little bit of orange in there. Whoops. Got to absorb. Sometimes I'm not used to all the water that kind of gets around on when I'm working with acrylic. <laughs> so you want your, you don't want your paint to be mixing in a puddle like this. I, I think it's from all the spritzing I've been doing. So just make sure you're mixing in a place that isn't a puddle of water. And I'm mixing a little bit of that orange into the white. That'll give it a little bit more of a warm Look, and I'm going to put in where those highlights are on our little seagull. And there's uh, top of his head there. And kind of comes down here. And to the top of the beak here. And then I'm going to go back in and mix some of, I have some of that original kind of gray mix I had. And it's his... Um, original layer kind of dried, of course, a lot darker than I had planned. So I'm going to go back and just mix in a little more of the original kind of gray tone and just lighten it up a little. You can tell the, the contrast and the white was just too much. So I'm just using that same mixture I uh, used of Viridian, the transparent brown oxide, and white. And just making it a little lighter and a little bit of the yellow ochre just because it dried so much darker than I had planned. And, oops just some viridian and transparent brown oxide. So I'm just kind of re-jigging re the values a little because it was just a lot darker. This is quite dark, so I'm not going to cover that over with a different layer, but this layer up here got a little too, just a little too dark. So you just kind of re, just go over it again and then you get to the right, the right value. Now for this back here, that is kind of a bluey white. So I'll switch to a light kind of mixture of cobalt and 
cobalt blue, white, and I can add a tiny dab of yellow ochre to that, and that'll give me sort of a, a lighter um, cool, cool white for around here. Like that, and there's some of that cool blue sort of in the feathers here. There's a little bit of white up there. And just gonna get a little bit of white and mix it into the the color I had for the legs, which was kind of like some orange and white. I can add a little brown oxide to, to it just to kind of lighten up the legs here a bit. And we'll let that dry and see what color that, how dark it turns. Now I'm going to switch to a smaller brush and work on, um, this is the number two again, and I'm going to work in some of the details. So I'll get some white and put it into that kind of mixture and I'll start to add some more details to our seagull here. Get some of that white in there and Kind of put these little tail tabs of white in there. And get that light on the top of the head there. Kind of comes around there. And there's some light here. And I just drag a bit of that paint over the edge there to give it the, you know, kind of blend those feathers a little. I'm just kind of blending this a little with that. Kind of grayish blue. And there's some of that comes down over the feet a little. So you kind of, you know, you work a little bit of that highlight on there. Now I'm going to go back to the, the wing color, some of that brown oxide and cobalt and blue. Cobalt blue, I mean, and white. <laughs> And just sort of add a bit of bit more light to that. If it's too blue, just add a little more of that brown oxide. You don't want it to be overly blue. And just sort of add some of those lighter, lighter feathers in there. It kind of comes up here. And then I'm going to use the side of my brush and just sort of put in some of those details. And then kind of come here with some, just some of those brush strokes, but I'm leaving a lot of that nice under paint because it looks so interesting showing through. And then you can mix up a little bit more of that color just without the white. So you get some of those darker details in the feathers. Kind of wrap that around, that shadow, kind of more that darker color there, just to show the, the way that shadow gets quite dark. When the feathers kind of wrap around.
I'll go back and add a little bit more black to that tail. Just get a little bit of that brown oxide and brown and red oxide and just sort of I want to darken those little legs in. And then I want to go back and just kind of get that color back in there. So I'm just mixing up some of that brown oxide, viridian, and white, and a little bit of that blue mixture to get that really dark value back in underneath his little belly there. and kind of get that shadow comes in really dark in there. There. Now I'm just gonna kind of be real careful, but I just wanna fix, get that eye kind of shaped in a bit more. And kind of get a little detail um, in that beak. So I'll use a little brown oxide and just carefully kind of get some of those details where the beak comes in here. Even use a little tiny bit of black with that brown brown oxide there. Kind of comes down here. And we want to get that little red dot underneath, so I'm just going to mix in a little cadmium red with the brown oxide just to get that little red dot there kind of blocked in. Like that, and then Put a little bit of the just cad red with a bit of orange. Make that glow a little bit right about there. It's kind of brighter. And get a little yellow and yellow ochre. And too much water there. I'm just going to move over here. You don't want it on the, especially on the detail work, you don't want water dripping. Just gonna put a little little bit of that bright yellow near the top. And another detail is kind of right around here. There's a little bit of a, that light catches the feathers right there. Just going to put a bit of that in. And down here, there's a, 
little bit of light catching the feathers in the front there. You can take some yellow ochre and white and right on the very edge where that sun's hitting just to kind of show that glow. You can put a little bit of that yellow ochre in, in the very front. Just kind of looks like the sun's hitting the, the chest of this bird and the rest is sort of in that cool shadow. And then you can go with a little brush and do some more little details in the rocks. Like that. And I um, want to go back and just work a little bit on the background behind the seagull. So I'm going to go with this darker pile of blue and white that I have and add some brown, transparent brown oxide to it just to get that gray mix again. And I'm going to put in some of that up here. And you can kind of very roughly, you know, kind of copy what you see in the background, but you don't want it to be, I don't want it to be super realistic, so I'm not going to worry about it. It's more just an aid to show the bird. So I will add a little lighter mix in there and just kind of go kind of dark to light there. And kind of lost his little highlight there, so I'm just going to go put that back on. Maybe just a tiny bit of light under the where the eye is. And I can just kind of cut into the leg area a little just to skinny those a little bit, make them a little skinnier. But you'll notice I don't spend a lot of time on this because I don't, on these little feet, because it is a whimsical painting, so you, you don't need to worry. They could be two little sticks. If you're, if you're new to painting and you just want to paint two little sticks without worrying too much about the details, feel free. You don't have to have them perfect. Mine are definitely not perfect. I'm just trying to, this is just for the demo. Just going to put a few more of those lighter feathers in. And add the little highlight to these. And here. And if you have your mix in, you can just go back and touch up anything you anything you paint too much on. I can go back with my gray mixed mixture here and kind of adjust that drawing. And then just look at things like in the reference photo, I kind of add some of that light that comes down here.
kind of blend that in a bit. And of course, as it dries, this gray, the back color has kind of gotten a little bit too dark. So I'm just going to put a little bit of a highlight there that hopefully it'll dry a little bit darker, just in case I'll put that in a little bit lighter. And I always put a little dot uh, of light where the eye is. And you can take some of that blue just to spread it around, you know, have some of that color in other places than just the seagull. You can, you can put bits of that blue in different areas. You might add a few strokes in the water here and there just to create some movement. Just have fun with it is the main thing. So I'm doing, I've done some acrylic videos for Patreon and there's quite a few on there, but this month I'm really working on adding acrylic videos to my Patreon channel. And it's just fun sometimes if you're an oil painter, you can paint along. I use the same, I use the same palette so that you can paint in oil using the same colors. So I've made it so that you can follow along in oil or, acry or acrylic. Now, I think that's, uh, that's about it. You could, you could put a little dark red alizarin under those feet just to show them a little more hitting that rock. And sometimes just make sure that little dot shows up a little bit more. But other than that, uh, this is sort of a beginner's tutorial and it can be done though, of course, by anyone. And um, I hope you learned something from this lesson and you enjoy it. And um, if you do paint this and want to share it with the group, you can go to um, Bold Strokes and become a member there and share anything you paint in on the Patreon channel there. And um, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Happy painting.